On the profile interview segment this week, I'll be speaking with the CEO of ENL Company. She brought us up to speed on the issues that surround the maritime sector and the port and harbor built by the 10th National Assembly. She also spoke about being a leading figure in the maritime industry. <music> Good to have you on the program. Thank you very much, Sharon. Thank you for having me. You're a great player in the maritime sector and you have thousands of workers that um, you manage from time to time. How has it been managing the workforce um, in the maritime sector? Um, thank you. For me, it's been a very good experience. Managing people has been a fantastic experience for me. You know, I did study administrative management in the university. And part of my course is human psychology. So when you understand the psychology of people, you know, it's, it makes it easy for you to manage people. I, we, in ENL, we have such a huge uh, number of people mm -hmm. under the employment of, under our employment, mm -hmm. you know. So to me, it's, um, it's been a good experience for me. Managing people is never a problem. And has there been any achievements in terms of um, reward while trying to relate with workers? I know that you're very popular in their midst, and that's why I'm sitting down with you. Yeah, uh, we you. have lots of workers that say she's our mother. But how has it been relating with them professionally and also outside the office? Yeah, professionally, uh, because I'm good at what I do. I believe in excellence. I believe in doing things well and the right way. I believe in doing things a proper way, you know. Technically, um, I see myself as good. I can rate myself as being good, you know, technically and experience in terms of experience. I've got the expertise to do what I'm doing in port operation in, in uh, ENL, in, Lagos. Mm. So for me, that's an added, added advantage for me. And then managing people, like I said, has been quite an experience, mm. you know. And um, uh, when you understand human psychology, being a woman also helps you to manage people well because we are mothers and we are naturally caring, mm -hmm. you know. It doesn't stop you from being firm. It doesn't stop you from being, um, getting people to do exactly how you want things done. Everybody knows me for excellence, you know, that you just have to do things well. You know, when you are good, you are my friend. Mm -hmm. And when you are not good as a staff, uh, of course, you also see the other side of me, you know. I don't compromise on excellence. Mm -hmm. I do not in any way. But I also demonstrate my you know, motherly side of me, you know, and that's when I bring the softer side of me out. It comes out naturally when it should come out. But when I need to be firm and stand on what I believe in, and it just comes out naturally. like that. It's natural. <laughs> you know, I don't know how it comes, but you just see one side of me very soft, and then another second you see the other side of me being firm. You know, it comes naturally, and I think that's a gift. All right, moving forward, um, the maritime sector is quite unique and peculiar. However, we know that um, it's male-dominated. You're a big player and you're a woman. Uh, what would be your words of encouragement to an average lady that might find herself in the maritime sector? Well, being a woman in the maritime sector could be quite challenging because it's a male-dominated sector. We, it's, it's, we're, we're, we're not many in numbers that are operating within the sector. Mm -hmm. You know, we're either as an, a terminal operator or, or as a clearing and forwarding person or a crane operator or whatever you are, you know. The space, space that women were occupying mm -hmm. in the maritime sector in the past wasn't that many. But we are encouraging people like me, who are elders in the, within the sector and doing very well, we're encouraging the younger people to come and occupy that space. 
we can do better than what men are doing. We have, men have got brains, we have brain. And uh, it's been proved that women are actually even more intelligent than men. You know, that's been proved, you know, over and over. You know, data shows it. So women should not feel intimidated by the dominance of men in any sector. As a matter, not only in the maritime sector, in any sector of the Nigerian economy. Don't feel intimidated by the dominance of men. Go there, slot it out with them, fill your space. And when you are good at what you are doing, by and large, men will respect you. You know, respect is him. You can only get, people will respect you for your, for you, for your excellence for your knowledge, for your performance. It's not something you sit and they give to you. Mm. You just have to dare struggle with right. them, fill the space, prove yourself, and earn it. Definitely earn it. <laughs> so for those that are working in this sector, are there opportunities or trainees, or what would be your advice for them to actually move forward or forge ahead in their career? Yes, it's very important, training. The need for training cannot be overflug or, you know, over, you know. So, but it's very important for anything you want to do in life. You need enough knowledge for you to be able to perform well. That's what I did. So, you need to have enough training. You need advice for people who's been operating within the sector. You need the advice. You need transfer of knowledge from them. You know, that's one thing when I first started, that's one thing I was never shy of doing. I spoke to people, mm -hmm. I'm talking about 17 and a half years ago, I spoke to people who are, who, whose experience, you know, I tapped on, you know. I, when something, when I wasn't too sure about what to do about certain things, I wasn't, I humbled myself enough to go to them and say, you know, I need help in this area of my job. And by and large, you know, I, you know, I, from the experience that I gathered, you know, and advice that I got from people who were my senior, who's been in the industry for a very long time, you know, I became um, an Amazon. <laughs> an Amazon. People, that's how they refer to me in the sector. You're never tired of lying, and you're never too old to learn. Mm. Learning is an, it's a continuous process. So, you know, um, and that's what I advise every woman to do. Okay, most recently, the Port and Arbor Bill was introduced to um, the 10th Assembly. Mm. It was um, discarded by the 8th Assembly, but the bill has resurrected, mm -hmm. and um, first, as a professional and as a big player in the industry, what would you have to say about this development? Well, that's really cheering, and I hope they will get it done with as soon as possible. The Port and Abbott bill is very crucial to the sector because that forms the basis of the bedrock of our business is done in the sector. You know, we don't have that right now. The Port and Abbott Bill takes care of that. What is the responsibility of Nigerian Port Authority, responsibility of port operators, responsibility of shipping companies, responsibility? We know, but, you know, it spells out in little details the expectation of everybody that is performing, that is operating within the sector. This Port and Abbott bill how to have been passed a long time before now. It's long overdue. I knew the intention of um, the president um, then, the past president, uh, the former president, President Olusegun Obasanjo, was to ensure that that bill was passed even before the concession mm -hmm. was done you know, before the concession of the port. But unfortunately, he couldn't get it done for one reason or the other, it became a political issue, you know. But here we are, and the industry is involving every day, you know. 
The maritime sector is very critical to the economy of Nigeria. We occupy a critical, critical space. You talk about oil, the next sector to talk about is maritime. And maritime can even surpass oil. Oil will finish one day. <laughs> we must begin to think. And the world is thinking beyond oil. You're talking about clean economy, green economy. But the maritime sector will always be there. We always be there. Government should put a lot of emphasis in the sector. This is a sector that has such a huge, huge potential. Creating an enabling environment is key. And I believe that Port Anabal Beach should also take care of all of that. I don't know what is in the current Port Anabal Bill, because I know, you know, several times we've attended, um, there have been hearings. public hearings here and there, but it keeps changing. Mm. I want to believe that the present uh, people in Congress will invite us and, uh, you know. Other stakeholders? Yes, other stakeholders, because you need us to be able to have a good bill. Those of us that are operating within the sector, we know the problems. We know the challenges. We know the expectation of everyone. So we have contributions to make. So it's very important to engage us in discussion. They need to engage us. They need to speak to us because we have you know, we know how businesses should be run in the sector, you know, not only as port operators, everybody that are all stakeholders within the sector, you know. So we want to see that before this bill is passed. I don't know what is, because it keeps changing. I know, I used to know what it was five years ago. I don't know what it is now. We need to know what is in that bill. They need to invite us. If there is any going to be any revision or addition or subtraction, we need to be part of that. And you know, it got, that bill needs to be passed as soon as possible mm -hmm. because that would do well for the marine and blue economy. You know, don't forget that. You know, we are just having a marine and blue economy. So the port and harbor bill too. Supposed to encapsulate. It has to encapsulate that. Accommodate that. <laughs> So it has changed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what we had was um, transportation, mm -hmm. um, uh, Minister of Minister of Transportation. But now we have Ministry of Transportation that is quite different from the marine and blue economy. So that needs to be captured, well captured in the Port Anabal sphere. Finally, decent work we know is essential for nation building. What would be your advice to CEOs like yourself in terms of um, ensuring that um, they provide the necessary wherewithal to ensure that workers actually probably get better wages or probably get the treatment they deserve? Thank you very much. Um, you can only get the best out of your workers when they are well treated when they are well remunerated for the job that they do. And every CEO must ensure, not should, must ensure that workers are well remunerated for the job they do. You, that's the only way. There's no two way to it. When your workers are happy, you get the best out of them. When they are well remunerated, you, get, you also get the best out of them, like they say. Uh, a, work, a worker Deserve his deserves wage. his wages. You know, you should pay your salary, the salary of your staff on time. You know, areas that borders on their welfare, you know, um, insurance, you know, ensuring that their lives are insured, workmen compensation, training, salaries, wages, or whatever it is. The only way you can succeed as a CEO is that workers, the, the, the well-being of workers are well attended to. You will have less agitation in your company and you will get the loyalty you know, of your staff when that's done. 
They are there, giving their lives, making sacrifices for the company. Well, so they need, you need to take care of them. Thank you very much for sharing your experience with us. It Thank you for having me. It was an interesting it's, conversation. Um, yes, yes. There's so much to, to say. We we'll definitely this have you some other yes. time. Yeah, well, there's so much to say. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.